Hello and welcome. My name is Christoph Putz and I'm your IT career guide. In today's video, I want to talk about how to teach yourself information technology knowledge. And in this case, this is the help desk edition. So we're talking about how you can learn the basics, um, the basic skill set that you need to do help desk work. Of course, this is really just an introduction for yourself so that uh, you really um, can learn as you go. But um, to get your first job, you need to have that basic foundational knowledge. And this is um, what will help you to get there. Before we get started, if you don't mind uh, hitting that like and that subscribe button, it will really help me with ranking these videos on YouTube and making the content available for more people. I would really appreciate it. Thank you. So now let's go into this and uh, talk about how you can learn the basics um, in information technology for a job in a help desk position. So we're, we're going to talk about um, how to learn troubleshooting, how to learn the basics of uh, computer hardware, and of course, how to learn the basics for a Windows 10 operating system. I'm picking Windows 10 because it's the most common operating system out there. If you work anywhere in corporate America, in most cases, you will work on Windows 10 in one way or the other. So let's start with computer hardware. And um, to really start troubleshooting hardware and understanding how a computer works, the best thing really is to take a existing computer and take it apart and put it back together and then install an operating system on top of that. So and the easiest way, of course, if you have some computer hardware at home, and I'm not saying take your expensive gaming computer or laptop uh, and uh, take it apart and see if you can put it back together. It's a little risky, especially if you're not really that well versed in uh, computer technology and computer hardware specifically. So there's a great low budget option if you simply go to Facebook Marketplace, let go, Craigslist, and you buy an older, cheap computer laptop or a desktop or in, in best of both worlds you want to buy both because they are slightly different and i want you to be able to open them up and uh, really explore and identify the different pieces that are in there so from a hardware requirements really is the basic thing that you need is just a working computer so it could be five years old it can be seven years old it can be three years old i really don't care um, it doesn't make a big difference for you um, what really matters is that it works that it's functional and uh, i do not really care about the operating system and and the state of the operating system the way you get it when you buy it so it's really just does it power on does it boot up and would it get you to a login screen with an operating system installed? So that's what matters. And then really, once you have this secured, you disconnect it all from power, and then you start slowly taking them apart. And with a desktop computer, the easiest really is like, you remove the case or the sidewall of the case, or depending on what type of computer it is, and open it up and take a look inside. So the main pieces that you really wanna look for is like the graphics card, uh, the RAM, the memory, and um, the hard drive and then we're looking for the processor all the other pieces they are critical of course and uh, depending on what you have there in front of you there's more but i want you to focus on those four items so i want you to be able to identify the processor and you might not actually see it because there's a heat sink sitting on top of that processor so we're not going to remove the heat sink here but we just want to see can you identify the heat sink then we know where the processor is can you identify the hard drive? Is it an, a spindle hard drive? It is an SSD, if it's an M2 chip. And this are really taking a look at that. And then of course the RAM, we want to identify, okay, how much RAM does the system have? And pull it out, put it back in. You wanna make sure that you, you write down the slots where the RAM is in if you have more than one RAM stick. So for the laptop, you will flip the laptop around and there are usually between 8, 10, 12, 16 screws that you need to remove. In most cases, it's just a Phillips screwdriver that you need and uh, you just start removing those screws. Ideally, uh, you want to make sure that you don't lose them, that you don't strip them. So you have to be careful when you remove the screws. And then carefully try to lift the bottom of the laptop. So where you just remove the screws and be careful because sometimes a you might be missing a screw. Sometimes they are a little hidden or we don't know if anything is connected or if there's a rubber sealing that might be a little tight and uh, makes it difficult to remove it. So once you have the laptop open, I really just want you to look for the uh, RAM. So the memory stick and the hard drive. 
Everything else we don't really want to take a look at. Um, once it goes further deep down, like replacing a keyboard or anything, that's usually work that is done by either certified technicians that you have on staff at the company where you work, or if you're under support, maybe Dell, HP, Lenovo, whoever is sending a technician out to you to replace these type of things. That could be a broken screen, it could be the keyboard, whatever else, sometimes even the motherboard. But all I want you to do is identify the RAM and the hard drive. And then you close it up again. And again, this is really just high level. So don't do this with the instructions I just gave you. This is just the basic task that I want you to do. So I want you to be able to identify these components of a computer system and really understand how they work. Ideally, you want to experiment. You pull out the hard drive from a desktop computer or laptop computer, power it back on once you put it back together without the hard drive and see what happens. The same thing with the RAM. You put the hard drive back in, you pull the RAM, you put everything back together and leave the RAM outside and then you power it back on and you just want to see what happens. So once you connect it to a monitor or on the laptop screen, you will see different error messages. And then I want you to take these error messages and start Googling them and identify, okay, what does that mean and uh, really okay I removed the hard drive I get this message oh it means the hard drive is not responding so if you have a dead hard drive in a computer that might be one of those scenarios so that's really where you want to experiment and there are other websites with more details that really help you you go into YouTube you check for okay this computer model replace hard drive this computer model replace RAM and you find instructions uh, usually but for me really the component is here understand what the hardware looks like know which parts within the computer are what and um, that you have that understanding then with troubleshooting as the next step so we're already inside that troubleshooting scenario where you power up a device and it throws a hardware error and you cannot boot up all the way so um, the system will not work and you have to start troubleshooting so this is where this leads to then the same thing with the operating system let's say you want to reinstall the operating system how do you do that I mean you cannot buy a DVD anymore these days everything is just downloads you have to go to um, Microsoft's website and find the media creation tool as an example and then put the Windows 10 operating system onto a USB stick and you boot from the USB stick just by default most devices will not just boot from the USB stick so you have to get into the BIOS and change the boot order or you hit the F10 F12 F1 F2 key whatever it is depending on the manufacturer and model that you have have, and then you can choose the boot device and you select the boot stick meaning the memory stick to boot from and then it boots and it installs the operating system you go through the different steps so that's really the next thing I want you to do is do a clean install of that operating system and of course if you're using existing hardware that is your own make sure you back up any data before you do that please so reinstall the operating system and then you go into the operating system and configure it in the basics so that you're at a normal desktop screen where you could now go and work with this computer. So these items, understanding the hardware, getting an operating system installed, getting it configured during the installation process and coming to a functional computer, that's really the first step that I want you to do several times until it's really second nature. So and then you have Windows 10 installed and you need to figure out how to license it. And uh, if you don't have a license, okay, uh, do you have a licensed key? Maybe that laptop or the desktop computer still has one of those stickers that show a Microsoft license key. So in the days, I want to say four, five, six years and older, uh, computers had like a, a Microsoft sticker with a license key number and you could just punch it in. Sometimes you have to use the manufacturer's installation CD-ROM to install an operating system. And well, computers these days do not have a CD-ROM drive anymore, so it will not help you. If you purchased a Windows 10 license, you could log in with that account, it will activate and you're good to go. The operating system will work in some what function you pretty much just really have a trial version so um, you cannot do too much with it and use it for day to day so microsoft wants you to buy a license key for this exercise really it's just like okay reinstall it how do you reset the operating system so google these steps and it's like okay you have it installed and you just want to reset the operating system into a clean state so walk through those steps and uh, really do it over and over again until you are really familiar with the process. So, and then as a last item really, 
we want to do troubleshooting of the operating system. So Windows 10 has some troubleshooting modes, but I also want you to understand, okay, where do you go for certain parts? Do you just go to hitting start, go to system, or how do you open up the uh, older control panel? and um, start troubleshooting. How do you install, uninstall software and drivers? So maybe it's a driver issue. Where do you get drivers for that specific model that you have? So if it's a Dell computer, you can go to support.dell.com and find your system tag and then look for drivers and BIOS and firmware updates and so on. So you can apply those as well as part of this overall troubleshooting process. Uh, I wanna point out there is a Udemy course uh, for Windows 10 troubleshooting. And the last time I checked, it was around $65. It seems to be highly recommended. It has a really good rating on Udemy. So if you can spend um, $65 or wait for a deal like around a holiday or anything, uh, purchase that course and go through it. It has roughly five hours, four to five hours of content and you will learn to troubleshoot the basics in Windows 10. Let's just recap here. So we looked at the hardware, we um, removed the hardware, added it back in and got the computer booting again. You had uh, different boot errors. You looked up those, then you installed an operating system. You had to create uh, the operating system installer on a USB stick using the media creation tool. You went through configuring the operating system and then troubleshooting. So don't do this just once or twice. Do this several times and think about different scenarios that you can do to troubleshoot. So let's say you have a computer with two RAM sticks. So let's say it has eight gigabyte RAM total and those are two sticks with four gigabytes each. Pull one of those of course, if the system powered down. So please educate yourself on that side. And then see what the system does when you reboot it and it tells you, oh, you don't have the same amount of RAM memory that you had before. So those is really from a very high level, the basics to teach yourself information technology, and I call it the help desk edition, because this is really geared towards your very first job in IT when you wanna go and start working at a help desk and where you need to have those basics. Plus you need them during the uh, job interview as well. So I hope you liked this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so as well. And then of course, if you can share this video, if you feel it's helpful for others, I would appreciate it. And then I'm looking forward to see you in my next video. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.